What's going on guys? Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about focal lengths and why you should probably be using more than one. I know it's tons of people out there in the world who are thinking, why in the world would it be worth it for me to buy another lens unless it has a better aperture than one that I already own in order for me to be able to shoot better in low light and get more depth off of my lens? It's actually a lot of reasons why, two of which are very, very, very huge. So. Let's just get into these examples. I went out on my back porch earlier and I decided to take my tripod, my camera, every single prime lens that I owned. I set the tripod up in the corner, didn't move the camera, did not move the tripod, and I just equipped every single one of these lenses, set them to the exact same aperture, and I tried to frame myself up in the shot the same in every single one of them. Major differences between all of these shots, two of which are huge. The first difference out of all of these shots, you probably didn't even notice it instantly unless you trained yourself to see this in shots. This is probably the biggest reason that a lot of people use different focal lengths and that's distortion. Now I'm not talking about the typical distortion that you get around the edges of a frame where you can see things clearly bending. I'm talking about distortions in the subject in the shot. Me, if you take a look at my face in every single one of these shots, you can instantly see it's different. It's so different. You don't really see that much of a difference between 24 millimeters and 35 millimeters because they're so close. But if we look at this on the opposite extreme side of the spectrum, 24 millimeters and that 100 millimeters, you can instantly see my face looks so much different. Typically, when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, you're going to see a lot of distortion in a person's face. It's going to look long. It's going to look tall. It's going to look skinny. These are just typical distortions that you see within human faces in shots that are wider when the subject is fairly close to the lens. Now, the further we go up in focal lengths throughout these shots, you can see that my face is kind of getting wider. It's almost giving my face a fatter look. 50 millimeters tends to be the sweet spot within all of these focal lengths just because it's probably the closest to what we see with our human eye. And everything beyond that just looks visually pleasing to us because of the depth and the lens compression that we're getting with the extended focal lengths. If you have no idea what compression is, I'm gonna touch on that a little bit more in depth when we get to the second reason. So the first reason is huge. This is probably the biggest reason why a lot of people decide to use different focal lengths. Wide shots are really cool when you're shooting landscapes, but when you put a person in that frame, you gotta really take note to how their face looks. You don't want people to look weird in the face. Now, the second difference is probably which you noticed instantly across all of these different focal lengths, and that's depth of field. Now, a lot of people out there think that depth of field is only controlled and enhanced by how low the aperture in the lens can go. And aperture does help, but one thing that helps a lot that you're gonna see here in a second is the focal length of the lens. Aside from that, how close the subject is to the actual camera and how far the background is away from the subject does help as well, but focal length helps. To prove this, the shot that we're gonna be taking a look at is from the 100 millimeter at aperture 2.8. And as you can see, it looks gorgeous. It looks amazing. The amount of depth that we're getting from the lens is just incredible. Now, the next shot that we're taking a look at is from 24 millimeters, and this is all the way down to the 1.4 aperture. And you can instantly see that the depth of field off of this lens all the way down to the 1.4 looks nowhere near as good as the aperture from the 100 millimeter at a 2.8. So you can see that aperture isn't really the only thing that enhances depth of field. Now let's punch back into this 100 millimeter f 2.8 shot because it's something else that I really want to point out about it. If we take a look at this shot, we can see that we're getting tons of lens compression. Now, if you don't know what lens compression is, essentially it's when the background of the shot seems a lot larger and a lot closer to the foreground than it actually is in real life. This creates a really aesthetically pleasing shot, but it can also act as a trick if this is what you're going for. We see this a lot in movies where we have actors on the beach and we shoot at a really, really, really long focal length and it looks like the waves behind them is just about to fall on top of their head. This is lens compression. It's when the background seems a lot closer to the foreground than it actually is. Typically, the higher the focal length, the more lens compression that you're gonna get. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to make it seem as if the background is a lot closer to the foreground than the shot. If we look at the 24 millimeter shot at f1.4, we can clearly see that the background is nowhere near me. It, it's, it's just, you can instantly see it. I used to be one of those people who thought if I could a wide angle lens that goes low in aperture why would i ever need like a 100 or a 50 millimeter i can just get as close as i need to to the subject it's gonna look just as good it's gonna look the same no don't no don't don't get up on someone's face with the 20 millimeter it's gonna look freaking crazy so this is gonna wrap this video up it was really quick i just wanted to touch on this because a lot of people don't understand this a lot of people ask me this and a lot of people think that is cool to get up on people's faces with super wide angle lenses. It just distorts it. And that's cool if that's the look that you're going for, but a 50 millimeter or even a 100 millimeter is gonna look a lot better on someone's face than that in a lot of scenarios, depending on how close you are, that is. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop me a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Peace out.